Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are going to be checking out five blues licks from pattern two of the minor pentatonic scale. So we're going to be putting that new scale into practice by expanding our vocabulary. Now, I've had a lot of students over the years say that they find it a lot easier to play in pattern two or box two than they do in box one once they got these licks down because the licks are really, really nice and they, they feel kind of comfortable under the fingers. There's not the same sort of stretch that we have in pattern one. You don't have to stretch really much at all and the, the restrictions on the string bending as well, if you stick to just the thinner string, it's, it's easy to just kind of feel it a little bit more. You know, there's less stuff to worry about. So uh, the five licks that we're gonna be checking out today, lick number one is gonna be this. Lick number two. Lick number three. Lick number four. And lick number five. So let's get to a close up and check out how to play them. Okay, lick number one. Okay, so we're starting here with the third finger in the tenth fret of the second string. Then the first finger in the eighth fret on the thinner string. Put third finger down in the tenth fret. Then we do a tone bend with that third finger. Mute, release. We're going to lift off the third finger to reveal the first finger on the eighth fret. And we're going to do a blues curl. Just a little bend, make sure you mute it at the top of that and finishing with the third finger in the 10th fret of the second string, okay? The count would be one and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. Quite a few different picking patterns would work for lick number one. I guess the one that I've I seem to do naturally is down, 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 up, down. Not really sure why I want to do the up pick there with the curl. But just remember that you're getting that mute there at the top of the bend. Down, 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 bend, mute. Up for the curl, mute, and then we're playing that root note. It's really important that you get the, the little mute there on the curl as well. It's just such a small motion, but it makes such a big difference. Lick number two. Yeah, I think I first nicked this one off Eric Clapton, but lots of guys use it. So this time we're starting with the second finger, and it's going to slide up to the ninth fret on the third string. But it's not a specific slide length, so it's not like where we go from the seventh fret to the ninth fret. It's just, and it could be from the seventh fret, or the sixth fret, or the fifth fret, or the fourth fret. You get the idea, it's just sliding up to there from wherever you happen to fancy it, okay? With the second finger in the ninth fret, that's the landing point. Again, when you're doing a slide like that, it's a good idea to look at the place where you're sliding to. Don't let your eyes follow your finger up. Just look right here and then move your finger up to where you're looking. That's the, the best trick for doing that. Then first finger's going down in the eighth fret of the second string and rolling over onto the eighth fret of the thinner string. Okay, see the way I'm using the point of my first finger and then letting it lay flat, okay? Okay, and while it lays over there, the very tip of my finger lifts off the second string so that we don't get the two strings ringing out together because we don't want this. Okay, it doesn't sound bad. We want where the notes are nice and separate. So slide, play, roll, and then Finishing with the third finger on the tenth fret of the second string, probably with a bit of vibrato. This is usually played just before the start of the bar, so you'd have two, three, and four, and one, two, 
three and four and one, two, three. It, it doesn't, you could use it lots of different ways. All of these blues licks, you could definitely have one and two, three, four, one and two and three, four, or whatever, you know, just made up a variation on the spot. But, you know, play it any way you like. Experiment with using it as, as the way I teach it to you and then see what else you can get out of it. So the picking that seems to work best for me for this one is a down pick on the first note, up pick on the second note, down pick on the third note on the thinner string, and then a down pick again on the last note on the second string. So it'll be down, up, down, down, two, three, down, up, down, down. But you could definitely be using down, up, up, down. Well, that also feels comfortable. Okay, so see what feels good for you on that particular lick. Lick number three. Ah, loads of fun this one. So we're starting off here with the third finger in the tenth fret of the thinner string for a tone bend. Mute, relax the bend, off to the first finger in the eighth fret of the thinner string. Then third finger's going down on the tenth fret of the thinner string, but slightly flatter than usual. You're gonna see why in a sec. So don't put it down like that on the tip. Put it down a little flatter, and then you're gonna roll the finger onto the tenth fret of the second string. Again, we only want one note at a time here. Bend, mute, relax. First finger in the eighth fret. 10th fret on the thinner string, flat roll onto the 10th fret on the 2nd string and finish with a little curl there with the 1st finger on the 8th fret of the thinner string. Now normally you hold the note a bit longer, start the curl and then make sure you mute while the curl is on, otherwise it makes it sound out of tune, right? So really important that when you do a curl that you mute while it's up. Not really a set amount, remember, it's just a tweak. I call it a curl, you know. It kind of feels like that, right? So, one, two, three triplet, four. One, two, three triplet, four. One, two, three triplet, four. Now this particular lick, I quite like the sound of that first bend coming down a bit too. One. Just a little bit. I let it come down before I mute it. I'm still muting it. Yeah? I'm making sure I mute it before the fingers come off. Otherwise, we're going to get this sort of... All of this kind of string noise stuff, right? So bend. Mute. One. So for lick number three, we're going to be starting with a down pick. Then a down pick again, up, down pick on the second string, and then an up pick on that last note with a little curl and making sure that we mute our bends and curls. So that first note's a bend with a down pick, then make sure you mute it with that outside part of the hand there, just touching the string lightly. Mute, then down, up, down, up, curl, and get that mute in again. Okay, lick number four. Okay, this one's a bit of a repeating lick, and the tab exactly as you'll see it on the website is just this. It sounds a little bit weird, but it's great for developing a little bit of your hammer on and flick off action, your legato playing. Kind of goes a bit faster this one, and it's nice to have a few repeating licks in your repertoire. So uh, we're starting here with the third finger in the tenth fret of the second string. And then we're going to put the first finger down before we had to start doing the flick off, by the way, in case you're new to this technique. But uh, so first finger is already down in the eighth fret, right? And then we're going to play the first note and then flick, flick the finger down so that it reveals that second note. You can do it even without picking the first note because just the flicking off action of the third finger plays this note at the eighth fret with the first finger. Okay, that's a flick off. 
A lot of people call it a pull-off, that's more common term, but I call it a flick-off because it describes the action flicking that third finger off the string to, to get that second note. Then we're going to play ninth fret on the third string with the second finger. Then we go back to the eighth fret of the second string with the first finger. And we're going to hammer on now the third finger in the tenth fret, still on the second string. Okay, so tenth fret, flick off, ninth fret on the third string, back to the second string, eighth fret, hammer on. Then first finger moves over to the eighth fret, thinner string. Then we're going to go back and do our tenth fret to the eighth fret, flick off. Okay, so for the timing, it'll just be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, really nice thing to practice just going over and over again. So trying to develop your speed with a metronome again. So one and two and three and four and one. Now finishing, you can actually just finish on that root note is a nice way to finish. But you could finish lots of other ways. You could try and scoot your way back up to doing a string bend. It's a nice one as well going. You could do, there's loads of different ways of finishing it that you should try and experiment with, but definitely you want to start that as a nice little repeating pattern there and try and develop your speed a little bit too. The picking for this lick is probably going to follow the standard format of picking a down on the beat and an up on the off beat. So we're going to have down, flick off, down, up, hammer on, up, down, flick. Can you see the way my picking hand moves even if I'm doing the hammer on or flick off? You don't have to do it that way, but that's the way that definitely feels easiest for me and I'd recommend that you get hip with that idea of keeping the hand moving even if you're doing some hammer-ons and flick-offs. You don't use it all the time, but there are times that you will where it will be useful technique to have under your fingers. Lick number five. Okay, this one's another really cool one. So we're starting off here with the first finger in the eighth fret of the second string. We hammer on the third finger into the tenth fret. Then we're going to roll first finger over to play the 8th fret on the thinner string. This little part can be a nice repeated package as well. So 8th fret, 10th fret, 8th fret on the thinner string. Roll it back over to the 8th fret on the second string. Hammer on, 8th fret on the thinner string. Can you see the way the first finger is making that little roll? Take a little bit of practice, don't expect to get it right straight away. And then we're finishing with a... Now this one's a really cool idea, so we're going to bend, relax and bend. And for this one it's really important that your muting is good with the pick and hand, we're going to talk about that in a sec. Lick number five, we're going to be starting with a down pick, hammer on, then an up on the thinner string. Again, same pattern, down, hammer, up. Again, that's worth repeating that little section, down, hammer, up, down, hammer, up. See if you can get it rolling, that nice little kind of rolling triplet feel. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. So the big deal for this last note is making sure that our picking hand is things that aren't being played, i.e. second, third, fourth strings at least. But we're leaving the thinner string so we can still have it. So you can hear there, the other strings are all muted by this picking hand. They're sitting right on the strings. There's the good note. These other ones muted, right? So when we bring it back down, I'm putting a rake in there as well, which I don't mean to do on this for this particular lick. 
Okay, you can hear there's no extra noise coming out. If I remove this hand and just pick it without anything doing any muting, you can hear you get all of these other notes ringing out because of the, the lowering of the bend. Okay, we don't want to hear that. Okay, so the trick there, you just practice trying to find the right spot for your hand where it's muting these strings, okay, but getting that one. You're going to find this sort of thing happens all the time where it's, you've got too much mute on. Yeah, it's going to get, you're going to accidentally mute that thinner string sometimes. So it's finding that right spot. But what you do find is that you develop a lot of sensitivity here on the outside part of the hand there. So you can kind of tell when it's, if you go to pick it and you can feel that string being picked on that part of your hand. So you know that you need to kind of move it a little bit further away. And then you get to start having that fun where you can bend, release, and bring it back up again. So the next step now is to put your new licks into practice. So I strongly recommend that you take each lick one at a time and use it as much as you can over a backing track. Now, I recommend that you start with it exactly as I've shown you, but as soon as you can and as soon as you feel comfortable with it, start mucking around with it a little bit. Remember, you can play you know, the first two notes over and over again, or the last two notes over and over again, or play it backwards, or play it you know, forwards twice, or inside out if you want. You know, the, the language analogy, I guess, kind of breaks down a little bit at this point because you can't take regular words you learn in English anyway and swap the letters around and have something else that somebody will understand but the language in blues is a little bit more malleable than that so it's a really cool thing to experiment with with what parts of the licks could you just kind of extract and use on their own I'm just looking there at, at, at lick number one that I've given you this or well, definitely the last part of that but maybe just the as well, you could just do those, you know, the bend on the 10th fret and the curl and al alternating between those. Or just the last two. You could really have a muck around with that for sure, you know, the first part. You know, you really, there's, it's not very set. It's a really good idea to play about with them and you'll find that you can do quite long sections of a solo kind of all based around one lick. In fact, that's one of the things that a lot of the great guitar players do is, is really explore one lick. Stevie Ray Vaughan was fantastic at it. The, a lot of his solos you'll find one lick recurring lots of different ways throughout the one solo. You know, Albert King did it as well. BB was a master of it. Um, you know, there's lots of the, the great blues players use this idea of developing one phrase and seeing how many different ways they can kind of tweak it. And the other thing that'll give you as well is as you're exploring a lick, you're going to hear other words that you're going to recognize when you're listening to the blues. You'll probably even find some on your own, you know, particularly with box two. Because of the way the notes sit and the notes that are good for bending on, on and you, you'll start to hear them pretty quickly once you're familiar with this basic vocabulary and you're listening to an Eric Clapton solo or a BB King solo, or whatever, you're going to start hearing like, oh yeah, I know the sound, I recognize that sound or the way that they're playing that. And that's a really big deal and definitely something that you want to be looking forward to. So get out there, play with these licks as much as you can, and then I'll see you for plenty more very soon.